Wild Critter, please don't attack my base. Did you know that critters appear on your map? After some times, there's a rare chance of you finding a critter walking in your base, which is pretty cool. And also another thing is that these workers, if you're actually upgrading something, they're gonna be walking, for example, the wood or the stone or the iron or even the gold to where you're actually working right now. So as you guys can see, this little worker over here, these two, or these three, are actually carrying the stone to the shock launcher, so that way it, it looks a little bit more realistic. I think that's a cool little thing, something that I've never noticed until now when I started up the game. And of course, the critter walking like a boss as well, one of the critters helping with the team or something like that. I literally got no idea what's that all about, but today in this episode, by the way, hello everyone, it is Arvorverse and welcome back to another episode of Boomage. We are going to be talking about prototype defenses, because I kind of want to take some time here to cover all that you guys need to know about these prototype defenses uh, from the start to beginning because right now the update has been released three days ago uh, or we're on the third day right now and we pretty much already know everything when it comes down to about this update and all of the new features with the exception of Hammerman because that is right around the corner or should I say it is going to be here in three days from now. Uh, regardless of that, I still kind of feel that some of you guys out there might be having some questions when it comes down to the prototype defenses. For example, what to focus on, uh, which defense is better than the other and what exactly they are doing so that being said uh, in this episode i'm going to explain everything with you guys and we're going to be starting on how you can get started on getting yourself some defenses so what you need is obviously a weapon lab i don't need to explain this but this is unlocking on headquarters level 15 um then in order for you to get some prototype modules uh in order yeah you need to do a couple of things here so uh there is like five ways for you to get prototype modules they're very straightforward way number one is if you take down colonel gearhart over here she's appearing once every six days and right now it just happens that she's here at the left top corner you see the reward thresholds and if you take down that amount of buildings you're going to be getting that amount of gear points so if you take down 10 buildings you're going to be getting 10 g's and that's going to be giving you this module. If you take down 70 buildings, you're going to be getting two again on top of what you already had. And if you take down 150 building, which is also blowing up the HQ, you're going to be getting all of them. And this is known to be the best way for you to get your rewards, like your prototype modules. So you might want to be taking this one a little bit serious. Way number two is Hammerman Strikes Back. Three days after Colonel Gearhart has been appearing on your map, uh, Hammerman will also make its entrance and he's going to start to attack your base. The moment he does and you defend it successfully, you're going to also get some rewards from doing so, including prototype modules. Number three is Dr. Terror. One of the random stages sometimes might be dropping a prototype module as well. It is entirely random. I actually did manage to get one of these complex gears on Dr. Terror myself. So I can confirm that this works. Uh, but there's no set drop rate. It is very rare intentionally uh, to get them. But if you do get them, it's pretty cool. It's, 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 uh, it's like, in my opinion, getting like a crystal or something like that. Way number four, taking down an NPC base. And way number five, taking down a player base. So those are the five ways to take down a, to, ta to actually get yourself some prototype modules. And if you don't know what an NPC base is, it's basically a base that is not controlled by a player. And of course, a player base is what we are. We are players. If you destroy a, a base of an opponent, you have a chance of also getting some prototype modules. So that being said, which weapon is the best and what do they do? Well... The Shock Blaster is actually really good, uh, but also is the Laser Beam, and also the Damage Amplifier, and the Doom Cannon. Uh, in short, they're all really good, they all got their great perks, but they all got different side of effects that I actually want to share with you guys. So let's start off with the, with the Shock Blaster. So the Shock Blaster actually has the ability to shock. The Shock Blaster shoots shock bullets at a, at a high rate of fire, dealing heavy damage and stunning the target. Essentially what a Shock Blaster is, is like a Shock Launcher. And the funny thing is, I think, at least, I'm gonna show you guys a little screenshot right now. The Shock Blaster has about the same type of range as a Shock Launcher. So, basically you're getting a free Shock Launcher on there as well. And that shock launcher is going to be doing more damage than a, a, a regular shock launcher. And it's going to be shooting f shooting faster than a regular shock launcher as well. So you might want to be considering picking that one up. 
Then next one is the laser beam. The laser beam is actually a, a really nice uh, a weapon out there, really nice defense. It shoots a laser beam in one direction. So for example, if one unit gets within range of the laser beam, which by the way, I'm going to show you guys what the range is. It's incredibly crazy as a matter of fact. So let's go to Colonel Gearheart's base. And there's two laser beams on here. You got one over here. And look at that range. The moment a unit walks in here, it's going to be shooting that laser beam. And it's going to be holding that position for two seconds. So for two seconds, everything that that is coming within the laser is going to be getting some damage. So let's actually resize it to see how much the range is. So it's about the screen right now. And over here, we've got a level 3 one as well. And as you guys can see, it has the same range or maybe even a tiny bit more than the laser beam level 2. So uh, that is what the laser beam is doing. It is doing a lot of damage over time. And um, yeah, it's just, it's just doing a lot of damage. Then number three is going to be the damage amplifier. The damage amplifier is basically a building that you want to surround the fences around. Because it, does a dash, uh, it, it gives them additional damage. So it's like a support unit. And uh, also on Colonel Gearheart, there's another one over there as well that I want to show you guys. And they're indicated by having glowing buildings. So these are all under effect of this damage amplifier. So this damage amplifier is giving all of these buildings a, 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 a nice boost in damage. So uh, you might want to be doing something with them as well if, if it suits your build. Because uh, I can imagine that it doesn't really work out for you. But if it does, that's always great. And then the last but not least, you got yourself the Doom Cannon. Now the Doom Cannon is ridiculously overpowered. I would say it is like the big brother of a Boom Cannon. That's why it's called a Doom Cannon. So it kind of makes sense, right? So the damage of a level 1 Doom Cannon is 7,501 shots. So it basically takes down everything with the, ex with the exception of a Scorcher. So um, it, it's definitely packing a punch quite a bit. And it goes crazier as the, level g as, as the levels goes on. So... Once again, a little recap. Um, if you want to stun a lot of uh, opponents out there, for example, Heavy Zuka or something like that, that they really cannot move and you uh, essentially want another Shock Launcher, you might want to be getting a Shock Blaster. If you're looking for something that is going to be hitting everything whenever it comes into range and have something that is like somewhat of a brother of a Rocket Launcher, you might want to be going for a Laser Beam. If you all around want more damage and you're uh, having a base that is kind of like revolving around you, having a lot of defenses around it, you might want to be going for the damage amplifier. And if you want something that just kills and tears everything apart uh, in, in one hit but takes a, a while to load up again, you might want to be going for a Doom Cannon. Now, uh, what I'm going to be talking about next is the levels of the weapon lab. Because I actually sorted out uh, what you're going to be getting per level up for the weapon lab. And on level 1, you just have the ability to build everything on level 1. On level 2, you have the shock blast level 2 that becomes available to you. And the laser beam level 2 as well. On level 3, you have the ability to build the damage amplifier level 2. And the doom cannon level 2 as well. On level 4... You're going to have the ability to build the Shock Blaster 3. And you're going to have the ability to build the Laser Beam Level 3. And on Level 5, what you're going to be getting is the ability to build the Damage Amplifier Level 3. The Doom Cannon Level 3. And you have the ability to place a second prototype defense into your base. So uh, that's basically all that covers about the prototype defenses. I hope it helps you out. Like... Um, I know for a fact some of you guys actually did ask me about how they work and I hope you get a nice view about how they work right now. It's very straightforward as a matter of fact, but all you need to do is kind of like kind of like decide which one fits your base a little bit better and also um, if you happen to get a lot of one material or one prototype module you might want to be saving them up for something a little bit better because for example um, if you want to be getting yourself a shock blaster and you only got complex gears if you take a look at the third level it requires you to build 12 complex gears so uh, like kind of like uh, check that out as well like see which one is better for you and you might be getting something that's a little bit more powerful but something that you didn't expect to be getting so always keep your options open because if you got like for example a doom cannon level 3 it's going to be very powerful also i want to point out this all of these buildings have a ton of health they start off with 15,000 going up to 20 and then 25. And if we compare it to, for example, a, let's say, a shock launcher level of 1, 
it has 7,000, so it's also another defense being added to your base as well, which is uh, actually also a little bit of a wall, so... I hope this little guide helps you guys out with your decisions. Let me know down in the comments uh, what you've already been getting and if this, guide, uh, if this guide actually did help you out. And that being said, I just want to thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, make sure that if you guys like this video, to boom, give it a thumbs up. And that being said, this has been Reversal for Boom Beach. I'm going to be signing off and I'll see you guys in the next one.